All right, guys, today we're going to look farther into Romans chapter 11, and the themes here are going to be continuing and persevering and holding on, all right, through everything, good, bad, ugly, whatever. Even if you feel like you're not attached anymore, hold on anyway. Okay, let me read it, though. It's gonna, it might come across to you in a, in a goofy way as I read it. Open up and, and, and read along. Follow, follow it in your own Bible. Hit me on pause and read it without me and skip ahead of me reading it. I don't care. You should have your eyes on it because me reading it out loud to you, if that's the only way you're hearing it, uh, you're, it's going to be a very confusing passage if that's the only way you hear it. Okay, But I am going to read it because it's the Bible, and I'm not going to go talk about the Bible until I read the Bible. Okay, So in verse 17, this is Romans 11, starting in verse 17, it's going to be kind of a long section. I read through verse 24. It's very wordy. Okay, Here's what it says. It says, But if some of the branches were broken off, and you, although you're a wild olive shoot, were grafted in among the others, and now share in the nourishing root of the olive tree, do not be arrogant towards the branches. If you are, remember that it is not you who support the root, but the root supports you. Then you will say, branches were broken off so that I could be grafted in. That's true. They were broken off because of their unbelief, but you stand fast through faith. So do not become proud, but fear. For if God did not spare the natural branches, neither will he spare you. Note then the kindness and the severity of God. Severity towards those who have fallen, but God's kindness to you, provided you continue in his kindness. Otherwise, you too will be cut off. And even they, if they do not continue in their unbelief, will be grafted in, for God has the power to graft them in again. For if you were cut off from what is by nature a wild olive tree and grafted contrary to nature into a cultivated olive tree, how much more will these, the natural branches, be grafted back into their own olive tree? All right, it's a very long extended analogy about grafting trees, olive trees in particular, and it's talking about Israel and Gentiles. Israel is the root. Israel is the first olive tree, okay? You can graft a tree. You can, when it's young, you can, or even you can cut off a branch, and if you do it right, you can graft in a branch of a different tree, and it, and the old tree with the roots will grow the new tree out of it. That's grafting in a nutshell. Okay, so that's what he's talking about. If it's confusing to you, that's what it's about. All right. So, if Israel, if, verse seventeen, if some of the branches were broken off of the original tree, that's Israel. That's the ones who rejected Christ. They're now broken off. They no longer have a connection to God because they have rejected Him and crucified Him. They're not connected. You break off a branch. It falls on the ground. It's dead. It's not connected to the tree. It's not connected to the root. It's dead. Okay. If some of the branches were broken off, Israel's been broken off, some of them, and you, you're a wild olive uh, olive shoot, it says. You're a wild olive tree. You're a Gentile. You're not part of God's chosen people. You don't know anything about God. Okay? Start it from there. That's what he's talking about. If you were grafted in among the others, so now you, you, you've come to faith and you've given your life to the Lord, and now you're grafted into a tree. Salvation isn't just about you. When, you. when you're saved and you give your life to Christ, you are being grafted in. You're being attached to a massive, enormous, across all of time and everything in the world, you're being grafted in to a major move of God that he started way before you and I, okay, through Israel. And Jesus was Jewish, and the whole thing came up through the, the root, he'll say, of, of Israel. So you're just the last guy to be, to be grafted in. Pretty cool, very exciting, awesome, now you're attached, but just remember that you're grafted into something that was already there, that, that the work of God. So it's don't become proud, that's what he says. All right, do not be arrogant toward the branches, the, the ones that are already there, because, oh, special me. Uh, if you are, remember that it is not you that supports the root. The root supports you. Then you will say, branches were broken off so that I could be grafted in. That's true. Okay, you're being grafted in to where the ones that rejected Christ have fallen off, and you're grafted in there, but guess what? That doesn't mean it's all about you. That's what he's saying here. Uh, they were broken off because of their unbelief, but your job is to stand fast through faith. Hold on tight. That's what he's getting at here. Hold on. Stand fast. Do not become proud, but fear. If God didn't spare the natural branches, then he won't spare you either. If you're trying to be grafted into the tree and, and, and think it's all about you, you're in the wrong tree, and God will cut you back right back off. Okay. Note, verse 22, the kindness and the severity of God. Severity towards those who've fallen. Meaning he cuts them off. He doesn't have patience for people that are going to reject him. He cuts them off. Okay. Um, towards those who fall, but God's kindness to you, grafting you in place you didn't deserve to be, uh, provided you continue in his kindness. So continue, like I said at the beginning, this is about 
continuing. This is about perseverance, enduring, hold on. Okay, hold on, provided you continue in your belief. Don't become arrogant and break off. Don't reject Christ and break off. Don't become proud. Don't do any of this. They were broken off because they didn't continue in their belief in the Lord. Okay, even they, if they do not continue in their unbelief, will be grafted in. Okay, you're going to continue in something. You can continue in your faith or you can continue in your unbelief. Either way, you're in something. And what you continue in, what lifestyle you continue to lead, makes all the difference. Okay? If they do not continue in their unbelief, they'll be grafted in. For God has the power to graft them in again. Uh, branch breaks off and dies. God has the power. Guess what? Raised to life. Straight up. God can do that. You and I can't do it. Uh, some orchard guy was trying to graft some apple trees and told him one fell on the ground and died, he would say, tough luck, I can't fix that. But God can fix it, okay? Uh, for if you were cut, cut off from by nature what is a wild olive tree and grafted contrary to nature into a cultivated one, how much more will these, the natural branches, be grafted into their own tree? So I'll, I'll, uh, we, we've read the whole thing now. We've, we've discussed it. Um, what are you going to continue in? What are you going to persevere in? Are you going to persevere in living your life for you? Are you going to persevere in some kind of pride that, oh, I'm a Christian and I'm special now and God's going to do whatever I say and all this? Are you going to persevere? What are you going to persevere in? You're persevering in something. You have a lifestyle, a style in which you live, and you're going to, you're going to persevere in some part of that. It's your choice what you persevere in. Do you read your Bible every day? Persevere in that. Did you stop? Did you used to read it every day, but you stopped? Well, now, now, you've, now you're persevering in not reading your Bible every day unless you start and continue, okay? Don't become prideful. Oh, I already read it. I already know it. This stuff's a review. I've heard it a hundred times. Don't do that. Uh, if you've heard it a hundred times, guess what? Maybe you should start reading it even more and teaching it, okay? Uh, if you think you know your stuff, then you, you, should, you should be active in it. If you know your Bible at all, you should know that you should be reading it more, Okay? Persevere, continue. John 8, 31 says, if you continue in my word, you're truly my disciples. Continue in it. And that, what that indicates is if you don't continue in it, that you're not really truly his disciple. Okay? Have you been grafted in? Stay in. <laughs> don't break off and think it's all about you. you. If it's all about you, you'd be off, off to the side somewhere. Okay? Let's continue in our faith. And let's trust the Lord for it. And let's be humble, not prideful. Let's persevere. And look, if you're persevering and you're like, I, I've been, you don't think of it that way. You usually think about persevering through things that are hard. You don't think about persevering through things that come naturally. But listen, the things that come naturally to you are often sin. The things that come to it naturally to a wild olive tree aren't the things that come natural to a cultivated olive tree. So you might not think of that as persevering. You might think, well, I, that's just how I live. Look, the way you live is perseverance. You're persevering in something. Is the, is the something Christ? Is it God's word? Or is the thing that you're persevering in just like go about living my life, never even thought about it as perseverance because it just comes naturally. Well, guess what? What comes naturally isn't Christ. What comes naturally to a wild olive tree is wildness, okay? Lawlessness, misbehavior. I'm a law unto myself, that kind of stuff. So let's be humbled. Let's be humbled and recognize that we're attached to a much greater thing than us and, and our personal desire. You get grafted into a tree, guess what? Now you're producing fruit for that tree, not your old tree, not your old way of doing it, all right? Uh, <clears throat> praise the Lord, guys. What are you persevering in? And, and I'll, uh, I'll, I'll kind of point back at, at yesterday's message too. Um, <clears throat> the rejection of Christ, when they rejected Christ, Israel rejected him, had him crucified. When they rejected him, even that was an act of hope because it got the gospel to spread into the Gentile world. So if it's really bad for you right now and you're like, I have fallen far from God's tree, from God's plan. I have fallen way out of line. I'm in sin. I don't know how to get out of it. I, I've um, my life has turned against God, and I didn't even know it was happening, or maybe you even did. I don't know. Uh, bad, something bad happened to you, and you snapped, and you said, "I'm not doing that anymore." Whatever your life situation is, look, 
Look, God can graft you back in again. And God can use the most evil thing in the world history, which was when people murdered his son, and you and I, our sins nailed him there. When you and I murdered God's son, that was the most evil thing in the world. And God can use that thing, that thing, to bring about salvation to the world, okay? He can bring about when his chosen people, whom he took care of and gave the Ten Commandments to and crossed the Red Sea and everything else, when those people shouted crucify to the Son of God, at the Son of God, and then did and nailed him up there. Used the Gentile, dirty Roman army to do it. When that happened, God still used that. We call it Good Friday because God used it to bring about blessing to the world and all the freedoms that come from Christ that have spread everywhere. All right? So don't ever say that you, you're you too far gone, that your mistake is too much, that God can't, can't save you from whatever you've done, or you can't break your habit, or this is just how I'm going to, this is how I live, this is, this is something I'd, I'd have to deal with, uh, whatever. Don't do that. Man, walk in victory. Continue and persevere. It's hard. Okay, well, guess what? Carrying a cross up a hill is hard. Jesus did it, and he said to take yours and follow him. All right, okay, so it's hard. Well, you're following God. He's not telling you to go, hey, you guys, you should go carry a cross up a hill. He didn't, no. He, he, he says, follow me. I'm doing it first. All right, you got hope. He resurrected. He promises the same for you. So listen, don't ever, ever fall into the trap of believing that your sin is too bad, that your sin is too much, that your habits are too hard to break. Don't ever do that. That if Bad habits will, sin itself will, will try to tell you that. It will lie to you because it's a liar. It's all it is. It's just a liar. Okay? Don't listen to it. You can't break this one. This is too much. Jesus can break it. Get grafted onto him. Don't you break it. Let Jesus break it. Okay? What does that mean? It means follow Jesus. Get your Bible. Get on your knees. Pray. Read your Bible. Study it. Get to church. For goodness sakes, get to church. Find one that's open. Welcome here. All right? Get in there. Get with a group of people. Follow the scriptures. And live by faith and walk by faith and trust the power of the Holy Spirit to break anything. He can break any sin, okay? Any past, any history. I've got people here. Lately, it's been almost every Sunday I've had people come to me. I wasn't here last week. I was in quarantine. But uh, lately, I, I think every Sunday of this year, which is still January, so we're not talking a, a long-term thing, but I think the first three Sundays of this year, I had people come to me immediately after church talking about how God was breaking stuff out in their personal life. They personally were being transformed by the power of Christ from some pretty nasty stuff, all right? God is doing things, and he has never stopped doing things. Only one stopping him is, is you. Will, will, will you. will you be grafted in, or will you refuse to be? All right, let's persevere in him. It's hard, sure. It's actually easy. He says his yoke is easy and his burden is light. You know what's hard? is going on to continue in sin and feeling guilty about it your whole life. That's hard. Breaking it, yep, that seems hard. But you know what? It's way easier than living with it, all right? Dying with it. Praise the Lord. We'll carry on into chapter 11 tomorrow. Even more exciting stuff in there. God bless you. See you then.